Alright, look. I've spent and continue to spend and will spend until the day I die my fair share of time within the Persona 5 fandom circles. I've seen, liked, and lurked on enough fan art, enough Goro as gay posts, and enough tweets from the always wonderful Today in Persona 5 Twitter account to last multiple lifetimes. So I know. I know how you folks think. I know that you folks love Makoto and for more than enough good reasons. The always steady force behind the Mona wheel that drives the phantom thieves and bumbling high school students into nearly professional vigilantes is awesome. The woman that demands attention and admiration from her peers for her status as she who can do no wrong, but someone who deep down struggles like the rest of us to fit in and feel like she's doing anything right at all is worthy of her own admiration video. But today is not that day. I know that you folks hate it when anyone is mean to your sweet angel cinnamon bean Ryuji, the always upbeat spark behind the phantom thieves spunk that maybe gets dunked on more than he should for a traumatized kid trying his best to find a home. But I also know that you folks are another one, another one, another one, another one. Mixed on Ontakamaki. I get the Ontakamaki disdain from the dissenters because on the surface level, she is someone worthy of that ire or annoyance. The blonde bimbo with a heart of gold and a brain without wrinkles is the first Shuten student we meet, and someone who fights by her side from the first palace on to the next 120-ish hours. If that air-headed, traditionally petty but vain caricature was all we got, it would be grating from the first moment she steps into Kamashita's car, from the last moment where she's driving away from the train station in Persona 5 Royal, or personally seeing us home in Persona 5 Vanilla. And to be fair, it's easy to see on in this light because, through multiple instances throughout the game's monstrous runtime, that caricature is how she presents herself to anyone stepping into her bubble. She uses that <clears throat> persona as a crutch when she wants to and as a weapon when she has to. Through her comedic relief acting moments to her self-preservation when trying to adapt to new acquaintances and new surroundings. But the reason we see this side of this character so much isn't that there's nothing more to her, in fact I think it's the opposite. These actions are born out of necessity and trauma, just like the behaviors of any of our phantom thieves. But they're not signs of a woman still struggling to find her place in this world, they're those of someone fighting as hard as she can to turn the world into a place she knows it can be. They're those of someone who embodies everything the Phantom Thieves want to be in their idealized version of themselves. That's what makes Antikamaki so special. It's what makes her the heart and soul of the Phantom Thieves. It's what makes her someone deserving of your love. But to truly understand what I'm talking about, we have to go back. All the way back, before the events of the game even kick off. Because most of who Antikamaki is through the first arc of Persona 5 happens off screen. And the biggest implied point you need to know about all of this is that Antikamaki is kind of alone. On is different from any of the main characters you meet in Persona 5's opening arc. And really, she's different from any of the Phantom Thieves we'll meet down the road, with the exception of our main character, in that she is truly self-sacrificing. Not just by her actions. If you want to break down semantics, every one of the Phantom Thieves, just by the course of laying their own lives on the line in a world like the Metaverse, is a self-sacrificing soul. Whether their actions of vigilante justice are good for the world or not. The act of putting her entire life up for the taking, in circumstances that are so abstract that most of the world wouldn't even be privy to the details of how she died is noble by definition, but more so is her willingness to do the right thing simply to do the right thing for no better reason than it being the right thing. On is kind. Not that Ryuji, Morgana, and the protagonist, or any of the other late-game Phantom Thieves aren't, but On is good in a way that's more pure than any of the other characters express. The three male members of the original Phantom Thieves all have secondary motives for fighting Kamoshida in the metaverse. For the protagonist and Ryuji, those motives are as simple as not wanting to be suspended. With their previous records and the labels that society slapped on them, both run a high risk of being sent to a juvenile corrections facility or somewhere even worse. Morgana's motivations are more complicated, and they're not really clear by the time we begin exploring Kamoshida's palace, but we do see that they're somewhat based in self-benefit and preservation. This trend tracks to the later game protagonists as well. Both Makoto and Yusuke have self-admitted moments where they let the fame of the Phantom Thieves go to their heads and dictate their actions. Futaba joins the group not to make the world a better place, but out of a quest for information about her mother and, presumably, revenge against those who took her life. Even Haru sends a request to the Phantom Thieves to change her father's heart before joining them to do the same task out of self-preservation. On is special as a character and as a Phantom Thief because she's the only one here that's different. On doesn't have a criminal record or a history of violence. She's well within Kamoshida's crosshairs, but she isn't directly threatened by them in the same way that Ryuji and the protagonist are. The four original Phantom Thieves need to defeat Kamoshida, and On included. But she doesn't need to stop his criminal actions to avoid legal trouble. She needs to stop him because On holds the core value of helping those in need, regardless of what she has to give up to do it, for better and for worse. It's this value that, at least to me, makes Antikamaki the heart and soul of the Phantom Thieves and Persona 5 in general. 
This group is supposed to represent shedding light to criminals that are lurking in the shadows, and inspiring others who are plagued by their own battles to fight against the injustices holding them down. But Ahn is the one who embodies those values more than anything else. She's never fighting for herself, she's fighting for her peers. She's fighting for people like Shiho Suzui, both inside and out of the metaverse. We see examples throughout the game of the Phantom Thieves eventually acting for praise and admiration rather than for their initial goal of justice and bringing hope to those in need. And to be clear, this isn't to criminalize any of the cast for being a bit selfish. I'm sure in the same situation, most of us would do the same thing. And in fact, I truly believe the game does an outstanding job of making these character weaknesses feel natural. These kids have been pushed down and neglected by the world their entire lives. And now when they finally have the chance to matter, they want to embrace it and somehow it's the wrong thing to do. The only one who never really succumbs to that weakness and continues embodying the idealized goal of this teenage vigilante club is Aunt. It's important to discuss who Aunt Takamaki is as a human being, what she believes in and what she fights for, to understand her value as a character in the world of Persona 5 and as the soul of the Phantom Thieves in general. It's her personal values that land her in a place of suffering to begin with, for as cruel and unjust as that reality is. But even with that cruelty, Ahn never wavers from the values she believes in. Ahn never gives up on seeing the good in humanity and fighting for a world that's done nothing but put her down. It would be easy for Ahn to abandon her ideals, and it would be more than fair to expect that out of her. But despite everything, she never loses sight of who she is. Let's play a make-believe game for a second. That sounds fun, right? Imagine you're Ahn and you move to a different country. Not just moving to a new house down the block or shifting school districts, but actually packing up your shit and relocating to the exact opposite side of the globe. I think it's the opposite side, I don't really know geography. Imagine abandoning everything you know, your friends, your extended family, even the language you're used to speaking and starting over without all of that. How would you feel? Scared? Alone? Now imagine carrying those feelings with you and having them all validated by a ruthless group of peers hell-bent on isolating you for no better reason than the fact that you're the new kid and you look different. You're an outcast from the moment you arrive, and nothing you can say or do will convince any of the new people in your environment to give you enough time of day to talk them into why you're actually not so bad. Nobody aside from Shiho. But hold on for a second, just a second, while I try my best to prove a point about Ahn. Imagine the feelings of loneliness that she went through. She's living in a new home, in a new country, going to a new school surrounded by new faces and has nobody to talk to about any of it. And that's not just the absence of friends or acquaintances, it's her parents as well. Famous fashion designers so invested in their jobs that they're rarely ever at home to begin with. Imagine being treated with harsh indifference during the most confusing and cruel time of your life, and coming out the other end wanting to fight for the same people that caused you that suffering. Wanting to put your own life at risk for the world that rejected you. Wanting to be a hero, not for the glory, but to make the world a better place to live in for the same people who didn't want you in their world to begin with. All of that is impossible without Shiho. Now keep imagining for a second that you're on. We are so close to proving my point, I promise. Imagine being forced to give up your life and start a new one that you didn't ask for at a young, impressionable age, and having that new life not just be worse than the last one, but nothing more than a glorified isolation chamber. Imagine existing in that darkness and the resentment that has to come with it. Not just toward the world and people around you, but toward yourself. Why can't I be loved? Why don't I deserve it? Then imagine someone offers you a light. Shiho sees on not just as a human being deserving of love, but of every bit of who she really is. She's someone that gives on the hope to keep going. Someone whose mere existence is enough to make Ons better. She's someone that makes on realize that there is good in the world, that there are people decent enough to fight for. In so many ways, Shiho is Ons entire universe prior to the Phantom Thieves. And in so many ways, Shiho is the reason that Ahn built the personal ideals that she keeps fighting for throughout the game. Shiho's importance to Ahn doesn't change once the two of them reach high school, but Shiho herself changes. One of the reasons that Shiho and Ahn work so well as friends is that Shiho is equipped to understand Ahn's pain on some level. All Ahn had for years was Shiho, but that relationship flowed both ways. Shiho herself grew up relying on Ahn too, but without too much else. At least one functioning parental figure at home that we know of, but at least from An's perspective, not really any more friends. Shiho herself probably felt scared and alone before An, the same way the future Phantom Thief felt. When we meet Shiho in Persona 5, we see her at what's close to her lowest point, or at least the buildup for what would become her lowest point. Those feelings of negativity likely began before Shujin, but were amplified in the hands of her abuser, volleyball coach Suguru Kamashita. We later find out the extent of Kamashita's actions physically abusing his students, and emotionally manipulating all of them to think so little of themselves that they wouldn't fight back. Shiha wasn't lucky enough to avoid Kamashita's ire, and with his heartless actions he turned a sport that was once a safe space for Shiho, someone who desperately needed one, into a source of her trauma. 
Shiho doesn't talk with On about any of the abuse, making up stories rather than admitting any of it. But On, the kind person that she is, sees through that veil enough to detect something is off with her best and only friend. On, true to form, wants to help Shiho. She has to. But the only thing that comes to mind for her, someone with limited power to do anything, is give in to what Kamoshida wants. Grant him his twisted, perverted desires and hope to God that it's enough to spare her friend. I want to be clear, this is obviously not the course of action that she should have taken, but can you blame her? On, the teenage supermodel, the naturally physically beautiful person that she's depicted to be in the early game of Persona 5, attempts to use her physical form as a means to keep her friend safe. Of course she feels powerless. In a world that's done nothing for her up to this point with the sole exception of praising her for her appearance, how is she on her own supposed to feel the strength to fight back properly? All that she can do, or at least all she thinks she can do, is use her body as a self-defense tool and desperately hope that she can take the crushing pain away from her best friend. So imagine that you're doing everything you can, the one tool you have in your arsenal for self-preservation, with the sole intention of helping your friend. And rather than sympathy, the world that spent years shunning you finally begins to take notes and forming all the wrong ideas. When they find out you're giving in to Kamoshida's advances, the man responsible for taking the joy from your only friend, just to do everything in your small modicum of power to help that friend by diverting attention away from her and onto you, they label you. They shift their indifference towards you to pure hatred and all you wanted to do was help because that's all you know how to do. And now imagine your efforts don't work. Imagine that you've spent months of your life giving up your integrity, your public image, and your sanity just to satisfy a monster just enough that he wouldn't hurt your friend any more than he already has. Imagine the acts you've taken, the sacrifices you had to make that turned you into an outcast and brought you a world of your own pain and trauma. The indignity you had to suffer at the hands of someone who knows they can manipulate you by threatening your friend only ended up making things worse. Imagine that now, after moving to a new country, being greeted to that country with oppressive indifference, making one friend and doing everything you can to protect that friend, your efforts are not enough. Imagine this monster driving your only light to the point where she attempts to take her own life. Finally, imagine that just hours after your friend's attempted suicide, you're introduced to the concept of the metaverse. You quickly learn what it is, and that the depiction of you within Kamoshida's corner of this hidden dimension is a caricature of your failed attempts at heroism. Every central character's awakening in Persona 5 is different. That's one of the things that makes them so special. Despite the power and the process being similar, the way we reach this point is different for everyone. For Ryuji before on, it was the defeat he felt when confronted by his tormentor and reminded of his past trauma. But for on, the moment of her awakening doesn't come because of a reminder of her past pain, it's an acknowledgement that people see her for something that she's not. It's the feeling that she fought as hard as she could for her one and only friend and failed. It's the feeling that now, in a world that did everything in its power to prove it to her earlier, she is now completely alone. On spends the first few days of Persona 5, and presumably countless more off screen, crushed by this image. She feels like a pariah. Someone who sacrificed whatever marginal chance she had at fitting in with her peers by trying to save the one person that saved her. On, every time we see her, shoulders this heavy burden as bravely as she can, but it's just too much to take. The moment of Shiho's attempted suicide is the boiling point. On Takamaki is defeated by the weight of Kamoshida's actions and the oppressive loneliness she feels on a daily basis, until she earns the strength to fight back. I hear you. Carmen, you're right. No more holding back. <laughs> there you go. Nothing can be solved by restraining yourself. Understand? Then I'll gladly lend you my strength. On's persona awakening marks an astronomical change in her life. Where she spent years unable to help her friend and the people around her, she's now been given a wealth of power beyond imagination the ability to manipulate individuals to her will. At the snap of her fingers, she could end a life just as easily as she could make the lives of thousands better. Persona 5 Royal does an outstanding job in the later game of illustrating the extent of the power of the metaverse and just how different that power looks in the hands of good versus evil. We see most of those examples through the eyes of the protagonist and Akechi, but for me, the best time this comes into play is this scene right here. On has every reason to be angry. On has every reason to want to hurt this man, this monster, who nearly took her best friend's life and drove every drop of joy out of On's. And now the roles are reversed. Now On finally has the power. 
not just to get Kamoshida to stop his ways, but to inflict a punishment that she can't take back. An has every reason to want this, to want to take Kamoshida's life, to seek vengeance for everything he did to Shiho and dozens of innocent victims who came before her. And deep down, on some level, I truly believe that she does want this. But instead... You have that right, since you've won. <laughs> On! If his mind shuts down, he can't admit his crimes. She spares him. Avoiding devolving into a killer is not a trait unique to On, but this moment here puts a perfect bow on everything her early character arc has led up to. When On finds out Shiho is in pain, she wants to help. When On finds out about the metaverse and the fate facing the protagonist and Ryuji, she wants to help. When An has the chance to take the life of Seguro Kamoshida, she spares him, because she wants to help. An Takamaki wants to help. She needs to help, because to her core, this is who An is. Despite her isolated upbringing, the torturous loneliness and the cruel labeling she endured, An still needs to help people. This is what makes her the heart and soul of the Phantom Thieves. The Phantom Thieves have the idealized goal of wanting to make the world a better place, but An is the Phantom Thief that lives by it as a principle. The Phantom Thieves get lost in the fame, celebrity status, and acceptance that becoming a real-life superhero brings, but On is the Phantom Thief who, time and time again, no matter the circumstances, always brings the conversation back to making sure her actions go towards helping people live better lives. It bears repeating that, of course, every Phantom Thief is pure of heart and self-sacrificing. If not by their actions alone, then by the reasons that each of them keep fighting through hell and back to be Phantom Thieves. But On remains this group's motor, the person who keeps them tethered to their idealized goal. Whether anyone on the team realizes that or not, On believes in humanity. On believes in helping humanity. Because On understands humanity better than anyone, and realizes that people are worth fighting and sacrificing everything for. On Takamaki is the heart and soul of the Phantom Thieves. Everything she's lived through, every heartbreak, every moment of levity, in every failed and successful attempt at helping, truly helping those in need prepared her for this all-important role. One that An wears like a badge of honor and embodies to perfection. Whether she, or anyone else in the Persona 5 fandom, realizes that or not. An Takamaki is everything that the Phantom Thieves should be. Someone who truly wants to make the world a better place. Someone who is willing to sacrifice everything for that goal. More than anything, someone who just wants to help. Aside from her bond with Shiho, there is no reason that Aunt Takamaki should be like this. She should not have her passion, her love for the world, her connection with other people after everything she's endured, but she does. While the rest of the Phantom Thieves fumble in social situations, it's Aunt who always finds a way to cut through the clutter and connect with the person underneath the noise. Aunt is the emotional charge behind a group that's so often without one. On is the levity and joy to a group that could so easily be crushed by their shared trauma. On Takamaki is the heart and soul of the Phantom Thieves and of Persona 5. Fucking Discord notifications ruining my voiceover. God damn it! Shiho, 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 Hiho. Reading is hard. Thief thumb, thief thumb, thief thumb. This is obviously not the course of action. What are you- why are you clawing at my wall for? On. 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 <laughs>